internet. What is really, really, really good? You know who it is. It's the one and the only, the triple, the G O D. And of course, I'd like to welcome you guys back to another installment of Triple the Gas Beak Song and Uchu Sentai Q Ranger Space number three. And yo, this was an episode that I wasn't quite expecting because it's like we three episodes in, it's like. I didn't think we would get a character focused episode. I don't but I don't even know if you can really call what this episode was that because we started our episode with a flashback in Champ's head about the death of the professor who created him. And it's like and it's like cuz I was watching the episode and it's like why are we saying this? And it's like I understood and knew that this was going to flow into today's story, but it's like, I didn't think nothing of it. It's like, well, Champ has a flashback to someone who killed him, but maybe it's just something random they just focusing on, just leaving little bits of crumbs for future episodes. But we soon learn that's not the case, but we'll get into that later. The thing that then proceeded to happen is Sean Rombo made his appearance, and... I talked about this last episode because, again, like I said, because of what we understood about Raptor, is that she's not going, she wasn't going to be in that leader role, quote unquote, for too long. So it's like they got to get her ready so she can become a Q Ranger whenever that happens. So, of course, you would then introduce somebody who's running the show, and that's the case, and, and show Rombo who was running the show because I like, I almost like let that let that technical pun like lick out of my face and I was just kind of like do I want to go there but the thing that was important about his initial appearance is that first of all he just he just made it rain Q Thomas he's like fuck it you know here, here's Q Thomas for everybody they do stuff it's like and here I thought honestly that a lot of this show was going to be about MacGuffin collecting no it's like most of them are just here You'll have you'll have some that will appear with the power of miracles or something like that because you know every every couple of seasons you get you get rangers are pushed back to a wall but then a miracle happens and some super zord appears or in this case Q Thomas making it rain like the strip club or something I don't know but again like I like when they like when I understood like the premise of the show was there are more Q Thomas than the nine that are present that helps our rangers transform that I figured that this was going to turn into like me it was going to turn into like every couple of episodes we're hunting down a MacGuffin now it's just that these they got Q Thomas and they are produced or whatever and they come from who knows where so we'll have to get some backstory on that the important thing about this episode was the appearance of Singer and Sasori Orange because you know what? I you know what? I'll just go ahead and just jump to the main idea on it. I'm glad that we are introducing this type of dynamic three episodes in. Is that even for Pie in the Sky Lucky, this the the ranger who can see beyond the light and all of those stuff can't convince everybody the first try. But it's like the thing that I like and I appreciate about Stinger's character early on is, is that, you know, he gonna join the squad. It ain't a matter of if, but when. And I really, and I really honestly think that you introduce a character like that and that's something you drag out. I don't wanna, I don't wanna watch episode four and all of a sudden, everybody's getting along. No. If the show wanna do the show in a way that and I guess I'm being selfish when I say it. The way that I can appreciate is that my alarm is going off because, you know, alarms go off. But like I was saying, is I like my thing is I don't want to turn on episode four. And it's, you know, Stinger, he's joined a team. He's seen it like, nah, you, you need, you need that type of dynamic right now. Alarm, stop going off. I know it's 530. Leave me alone is, again, being interrupted by an alarm, is I need to see this dynamic grow. And I'm not even talking about the beef between Champ and Stinger, just the whole Stinger thing, period. Because I talked about this in episode one, and I'm glad at this point that we're getting it. 
We need an inside look at Dark Matter. And Stinger is going to be the character to bring you the POV of what's going on with the bad guys. Because, trust me, I can already tell you how this face turn is going to happen. Like most face turns do. Dark Matter going to do something so fucked up. It's going to be, I don't know if I can fuck with y'all no more. I don't think I can do it. Face turn. That's it. It's like, it don't, it's like, it's so basic, but it's so dynamic at the same time. But the episode should build to that. Is that right before you get like what would be like you would get to like six ranger time or whatever? Because when you think about Sentai over the past couple of years, I'm like six rangers if you drop. I'm like, let me think about let me think about like recent like six rangers. Let me think about that for a second. Um, let me see because I'm, I'm sitting up here thinking like because. Because I'm sitting up here and I'm thinking like, you know, Zuo Dawa, though, he dropped like episode like 19. You had starting, you had starting edge and he dropped like, he was like an episode 10. So it's like, depending on like where you want to sell a damn toy, I guess that's where you drop that. But it's kind of different because it's not really going to be like a toy based plot. That is going to lead to Stinger joining. It's just going to be the progression of the plot itself, no interruptions, that will get us to that point. And that is something that I can look forward to and appreciate. So, this episode, like I say, didn't a lot happen, but a lot of bridges for plot are being built. Is that you have Show Rombo, he's in the building, he's running, he running his show now. So, that means any episode now, Raptor is going to get our Q Ranger power. So, That'll be interesting to see whenever the hell that happens. You have this whole Stinger thing in its own little universal corner where he is going to be our eyes and ears inside Dark Matter as he continues to be the Scorpion Sting, so to speak, in the Q range, in the Q range, his literal ass, until it's time for him to face turn. And that's just what's going to be like the immediate dynamic is that. When I think about it, though, given how quick they've been sitting up here trying to get the squad together, I give Raptor two episodes tops before she get a Q range of powers. I give her, I give that two episodes top. Given that they just sitting up here like, no, there's not gonna be a MacGuffin hunt. No, Raptor isn't leading the team. Joe, Show Rombo is, and it's that. Now that I think about it, that's something I want to bring up. I do wonder what type of relationship that Raptor and Show Rumble are going to have because I don't really think you really going to get some some swan doggy Kruger shit. I don't think that's what the dynamic that you're looking for there. I don't know. Maybe they fall in love and wait. I'm sorry. Those are spoilers for Decker Ranger. My bad. Ah. Forget I said that. But it was it was heavily implied from like episode one that Schwan Shitori loved her some Doggy Kruger. So it's not really a spoiler, but how that relationship evolved is, and I don't want to take that away from you, but I do wonder what that's going to be because when you got the leader, and I'm guessing, I'm guessing Raptor would be technically the lieutenant. You'd be the lieutenant in this revolution, quote unquote. Is you really wonder, because it's like they got this little relationship. She's smacking them over the head. Like, would you calm the fuck down? You're supposed to be leading the team to smacking them. So, there, it's going to probably be some comedic back and forth. But I don't really don't think it's going to get all that serious. But it should be interesting to, like, to see that dynamic in play. And it's like the more, it's like you slowly see these characters evolving. It's like this episode had a whole bunch of Naga actually expressing himself. So, you know what I'm saying? He won episode in, and he already deep into his feelings. So, you know, it's good to see the little things. And I really think that's what I probably need to start watching the episodes for, knowing that I'm going to review them, is watching for the little stuff that happens. Like, for the little bits of growth. Because, again, 
I started this, I started the review off trying to figure out was this really a character focused episode for Champ and it kind of was in a way, but given that this show has a big giant ensemble of nine key rangers, is that you really gotta start building these building these bridges for all this backstory and all this plot that you have to deal with. Because you have a lot of dynamics in play here. And it's like, I say the word dynamics a lot. But with a show with nine Q Rangers, with, with nine Q Rangers, they command a, a whole set of bad guys and all this stuff. You got everybody going every which way. So you really got to start in these early episodes. And it just can't be we getting to know the team. And it's like, because it's like Q Rangers build up when it comes to characters that are different. Because usually when you have a Sentai, it's like you get... Those early episodes after they get the power and they get to know their power, you get those get to know me episodes. Like those character focus episodes you get at the beginning of a series. And this episode was something you get like halfway into a series. Like once you have that I am so and so episode and I get my character focus, this is me, this is what I'm about, this is what we are focusing on that I want you to get to know about me, the character. This show has to forego all of that because you have too many dynamics happening at one time where you can't focus that concentration. So you are probably going to get more champ like episodes, and that's probably how you they gon they gonna jump head first into these character focused episodes because you have to set up the backstory because you have a lot of backstory and you only have what? Anywhere between 47 and 50 something episodes, because that's about the average length of a sentai, to really Get to know these characters, want to believe in these characters, let them fight, do their thing, and then have them ultimately triumph because they are the good guys. So, again, like I said, you have a whole bunch of dynamics in play with with an ensemble that's big. So, you got to build these bridges early. They, they, they don't have time for get to know me episodes. We got to hop straight in the backstory. And I really think that, you know, that the, ep- that the episode itself, the backstory that it had to tell in Champ in order to introduce Stinger, it didn't hurt either one of the characters. That's just episodes that when I'm used to Sentai for all the Sentai I've watched over the years, those are like your mid-break episodes. That's like the second character focus episode where the backstory of the character flows into the plot of the day. Except we in episode three and this stuff is already happening. So is that again, like I look at that and see that this is the dynamic that they wish to work with and play around. So it's okay. It's okay. I, I'm like, I'm not sitting up here, you know, pointing my finger and wagging my finger at the show and damn it, like, no, you can't do that. I sat up here within this conversation with you guys and I'm understanding that's exactly what the show needs to do. Not what the show wants to do, what it needs to do, given its premise, given the dynamics in play, and given what it is that you have to do anywhere between 47 and 50 episodes to get me into these characters, believe in these characters, let them fight, and ultimately triumph. You have four things to do. And about, again, like I say, anywhere from 47 to 50 episodes to do. So, again, it should be interesting to see where this goes, to where all these dynamics are being built. Like I said earlier, what they going to do with Raptor, I'm not really sure. One or two episodes top, she gets her powers. They need to let Stinger be on the other side of the play field. I say give it episode 15. I know that's probably a long time to sit up her and let the, and let him be a pain in the Q Ranger's ass. But I think that's enough time to have a POV focus on dark matter and an inside look. Because I see them building that up. As just as they explain the hierarchy. Is that you got one dude now. It probably won't be more than two dudes. It probably won't be more than two high ranking lieutenants. In play at the same time. Without one getting their ass kicked. So one going to get their ass kicked. One going to get replaced by the other. Someone will come in midway. That one will get their ass kicked. And that's how you got to do that. Because you got you got. The underlings, and then you got the boss of the underlings, and then you got the bosses of the underlings of the bosses, and then you got the main boss, and then you got super final boss. So, again, lots of dynamics at play on both sides of the field, and it's like, I really think that, like I said earlier, Stanger will be our eyes and our ears into that world because it would be weird to just sit up here and do what, like, a lot of Sentai do, and just cut to what the villains are doing today. This is... 
not a show where you have the time to try to build a village in that way because we talked about this last episode and the episode before that. Dark matter. Hella fucking hands off on stuff. So the plot not going to make you really care about these bad guys, but we have to find a way to get to know them with, with, while having a legitimate reason to cut to meanwhile at the Legion of Doom to do something like that for it. So it'll be interesting to see all those dynamics in play. And I know I've said that word and like repeated what I said a whole bunch, but the point of it is, is that I need you guys to understand where I'm coming from as I'm looking at the show and looking at what the show is going to be. What I'm saying right now in Space 3 won't be what I say in Space whenever when it is. Because at that point, I, w- I would have seen this whole thing to build its bridges and the cities around its plot to see the full thing. Right now, I'm only three episodes in and based off what they're doing, they doing episode 20 stuff in episode 3. We talk about we talk about this in X8 every damn week. I spent like the first 10 episodes of XA talking about they doing mid-season shit like right now and don't know why. And this is another show again that because of how this episode was presented is this is how this is the flow going to be. We need to hop right into the action. It's like I said, we we don't have time for, hey, this is my get to know me episode. I'm so-and-so. No, we don't have time. We don't have time. You you might get you might get that one little laid back episode or whatever. You might get a couple little laid back episodes, some little slice of life episodes or something. But it's not gonna be too much of those get to don't be episodes because the threat that's in place and the plot that's in place to support that threat doesn't have time. That's why again, and I will repeat this: why we got an episode that started off with a flashback. That normally you wouldn't get this early in a Sentai period. So it's good to know and it's good for the show to present to me as someone who takes a look at this, dissects it, reviews it, to see that this is where y'all coming from. And I'm like, yo, what's cool with me? Y'all do what y'all do. Y'all do what it is that y'all do. Appreciate that. But yo, that is a wrap on this episode of Usu Sentai Q Ranger. Um, let me see. Before we get out of here, um, if you guys want to know how to play Primary Show on your computer, there's a video for that with we'll link in the episode and all that. Then I get into this little side business about talking about archiving, archiving your stuff. Right click, save as, back it up some damn where if you see something you like and you think it might disappear or you see some DLC you think you want to buy, buy the shit. Because one day it'll disappear. And unless somebody did you the favor of backing it up somewhere or putting it on some website that has a whole bunch of Spanish on it, probably not going to find it. That's how it is. Um, The Cooler be out this week. Got a special little mini installment of that popping off. Actually, a full installment out, I think about it, because of when it was supposed to come out. And all the rest of the stuff we got on the back end. So, just be expecting plenty of work from me and the squad, man. We got what you need. So, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to get up out of here. You know who it is. It's the one and the only, the triple, the G-O-D. And I'd like to once again thank you for joining me for another installment of Triple the Guy Speaks on. And with that, start changing. <laughs>